So today we move on to a new section of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, and I'm going to try to share it with you from memory. Here we go. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders shall be subject to judgment. But I say to you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. And anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, will be answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar and first go and be reconciled to them. Then return and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are on the way with them. Or you will be handed or your adversary will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the officer and you'll be thrown into prison. For truly I tell you you will not get out until you pay the last penny. So today we begin looking at these six examples uh, for Jesus of deeper righteousness. So a bit of context last week we were looking at the idea that our righteousness must surpass that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law if we are going to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, which sounds really shocking. Um, And Jesus is going to spell out what this deeper righteousness looks like. And today he begins by looking at the idea of murder and what it looks like to have a deeper righteousness with this commandment about murder. And so, yeah, this is where Jesus starts today. You shall not, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. So this is one of the Ten Commandments. uh, You shall not murder. And then Jesus summarizes uh, a lot of other bits of the Old Testament law by saying anyone who murders will be subject to judgment, which means that they'll be subject to human courts. Uh, So this would have been very familiar territory for Jesus' Jewish audience. The Ten Commandments, you couldn't quote something that would be more familiar to them. And what we see Jesus doing here, and in all of these six examples, which we're going to spend the next 10 weeks talking about, is he goes behind what has been written, and he explains God's intention behind the scripture. So Jesus reveals here the real intent of God God in this law about murder. What Jesus does with this commandment uh, would have been shockingly new for his audience. What he says is, I tell you, anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. So Jesus takes this law about murder and he intensifies it. Anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Now, there is a big gap that exists between anger and murder. Uh, Murder is an objective, physical action, something that most of us will never do. It's a brutal. Um, this is not, by the way, referring to warfare. This is talking about vindictive murder. That's the kind of murder we're talking about here. Whereas anger, on the other hand, is something that is hidden uh, in our mind. And it is hidden in the mind of all of us. But it is true that uh, the kind of murder Jesus is talking about, the first step on the path to that kind of murder is anger. Anger are the first steps on the path that leads to murder. And Jesus is saying that that anger, that first step down the path that leads to murder, it will be subject to judgment as well. Now, the kind of judgment that Jesus is talking about, it it has to be different from what he meant when he said that murder was subject to judgment. Because when he talks about murder being subject to judgment, he's talking about human justice, you know, law courts, and the judicial process. Uh, But Jesus isn't advocating for that process when we think angry thoughts. Jesus isn't saying that the thought police should come and arrest you when you think angry thoughts, um, because we would all be spending a long time in prison if that were the case. What Jesus is talking about is judgment from God. Uh, And that's really clear when you get to the bit where he says, whoever says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. So what's clear about righteousness from this first statement of Jesus is that Jesus's righteousness, it goes all the way down to the 
emotional reactions that we have in our minds. Unrighteousness is being angry at a brother or sister, which like that is really intense, Jesus. That is really challenging. Now we need to ask the question, what kind of anger is Jesus talking about? Because Jesus himself, we will remember, gets angry from time to time. Well, he fleshes it out a bit more. He says that anyone who says Raka will be answerable to the court and anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. So Raka and you fool, these are both verbal insults, expressions of anger toward someone. The Raka means something like you boof head or you imbecile and you fool is literally saying uh, you sack of air, like somebody is nothing. So this is the kind of anger that Jesus uh, never expresses in his life, at least in the life that we have recorded of him. Uh, and this is the reason why Jesus, for Jesus, this is a key example of unrighteousness. Because remember, we've talked about this a few times, but righteousness is about treating others rightly, treating them as they deserve to be treated. So righteousness towards God is treating God as he deserves to be treated. And righteousness towards others is treating others as they deserve to be treated as people who are made in the image of God. So if we're going to treat others rightly, then we should not be insulting towards them because our anger and our insults towards them are treating them as less than people who are made in the image of God. When you say that they are a buffhead or a sack of air, you're not thinking them as the dignified and worthy creatures which God has made them to be. And by the way, this appeal to the image of God is actually the grounds for not murdering as well. In the Old Testament, when uh, God has rained down a flood and Noah has come out of the flood, God says to Noah afterwards in, in Genesis 9, 6, Whoever sheds human blood, by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. And so the reason that we should not murder is because people are in the image of God. And what Jesus is saying here. Is just the logical extension of that. If they are undeserving of murder because they are made in the image of God, then they are also undeserving of insult as people made in the image of God. So just to finish today, let's let's talk a little bit about insult. I read this quote uh, from a commentator, R.T. France. He says, Ordinary insults may betray an attitude of contempt which God takes extremely seriously. Ordinary insults. Uh, let's spend a little bit of time thinking about our ordinary insults because it's true that insults are actually quite ordinary uh, in life. At a basic level, what Jesus is saying is that we should not call people insulting names. Names that diminish their worth as people who are made in the image of God. Calling in that people such names is unrighteous, according to Jesus. What this also means is that racism and racist jokes, when it is expressed verbally, uh, these sorts of things are not for kingdom people. You often hear the justification, oh, well, it's just a joke, you know, whether it's about, well, whoever it's about. That kind of diminishing talk about other races, it goes against what Jesus is saying here about the inherent worth of other people. And... Lastly, I'll suggest that the way that we tend to refer to the LGBT, etc. community can, order, or can be described as ordinary insults. So I want you to assess your life, assess your heart, and think about this. Ordinary insults betray an attitude of contempt, which God takes seriously, extremely seriously. So yeah, I leave you to consider where your name calling might be a subtle expression of your deeper contempt.